coming up on the center of it all. We show you a new exhibit that recently flew into town and a community celebration that lasts for days and fills the streets with pride. Mel is grilling with us today and we check out the new game that everyone is talking about. All that and more right here on the center of it all. and thank you for joining me this week. We are in studio today because I can't handle the heat and the humid weather we've had the past couple days. But if you are looking to brave the heat, One Zoo recently opened a new exhibit with some big hands-on experience. Reptile Land, smaller than your average zoo, but has a more personal touch. And just like their name says, they specialize in reptiles. Huge main gallery where you can see lots of live uh, amphibians and reptiles up close and personal. We have a alligator exhibit, and then we also have our Komodo dragon and giant tortoise exhibit, as well as a dinosaur pathway. The zoo opened in 1964 and has been expanding ever since, bringing in new animals, but keeping that hands-on experience they are known for. And how do they do that? A lot of their popularity come from their shows, which make the experience more exciting than just looking at the animals. You know, it's not an exhibit, but our shows are very, very popular because everyone wants that chance to touch a snake or touch an alligator. So I like to say that we're a hidden gem. Um, yes, we're in a lesser known area, but if you come here because we are a smaller AZA accredited zoo, you get a more personal experience, not only with the front desk, but also get a more personal experience with us zookeepers. Snakes, alligators, Komodo dragons, and the newest addition to the Reptile Land family, around 300 beautifully colored parakeets. We did butterflies for almost 10 years, and it was great, it was nice and relaxing. But then we decided to mix things up this year, and I'm a big bird fan, so I kind of whispered in the boss's ears that, hey, we should try to do birds, and other uh, zoos were doing this, and it was having great success, so we decided to bring something different to this area. It was different, and even more involved than some of the other exhibits offered at the zoo. You are right in the cage, mingled in right with the birds, and that's part of the beauty of the experience. You get to walk through a pathway that will lead you through where all the birds uh, are sitting and resting, you can see the birds interacting with one another. You can see them playing even a little bit, even taking a bath. But if you really want the up close and personal experience, um, we provide seed sticks or you can purchase seed sticks from us. Um, and then they will fly down onto these popsicle sticks and you can watch them pick the seeds right off the stick. I tried a seed stick myself and it was definitely an experience to have four birds trying to eat off of one popsicle stick. But something I had never done before and something that people of all ages can enjoy. And fun while learning is something that is important here, especially for this new exhibit. Uh, it helps to educate people that yes, birds are in fact reptiles, uh, and that it also gives them a personal experience where they actually get to be able to touch animals even more. We do do touching at our shows, but this just adds yet another element to what we provide here at Russell Land. The birds for the exhibit came from a breeder in Texas. They flew in on a plane. <laughs> but in the wild, they're found in Australia. However, you'll only see the colors white and yellow. But after being bred in captivity for over 300 years, blues and purples are colors you'll see at Parakeet Landing. My personal favorite has got to be the ones that are almost purple in color. Um, it's like a really deep blue, but when the sun hits it in the right way, it, it looks purple. The birds are a permanent addition to the zoo, but the exhibit is set to close at the end of October when the cold weather sets in. But for now, it's drawn many people through the doors, leaving with a special experience. Not to, you know, pick favorites here, but I do have to say the parakeet exhibit is a huge hit because it's just that overwhelming interactive experience. People are loving it. They get to have an up close and personal experience with these birds. Um, some people who come in a little bit nervous, as soon as they discover they get to hold a seed stick and watch these amazing birds interact with them, they soon fall in love with it. The zoo is looking into expanding and bringing in new exhibits, but we were told for now what those animals are will remain a mystery. When we come back, we check out one town's celebration of their history. Welcome back. Phillipsburg was crowded this week with people and food for Heritage Days. We went to see what those festivities are all about. Handmade crafts, 
good music, a variety of food, these are all things you'll find in the streets of Phillipsburg from July 13th through the 17th for Heritage Days. In 1997, Phillipsburg celebrated its bicentennial and hitting that major milestone brought a massive amount of community pride. Committee members didn't want to see that pride go away, so they decided to hold an annual event, Heritage Days and it's been happening every year since 1998. And with every passing year, the pride just keeps growing. This town has run into some rough times over the years, but for some, that has only made them stronger. I think the commitment that we want to show is if you're dealt some bad times, you don't fold. And how can this day after day celebration improve? By gaining some more helping hands. Everything you see from shutting down the streets to cleaning up is all done by nine volunteers. We could double our workforce and it would be fantastic. You look for ways to improve. But it's more than just having fun. It's a way for people to learn more about the history of Phillipsburg and how it grew into the town it is today. But to tell the people in our community, we have a great community. Let's capitalize on what we have. We just need to build that pride and, and show people we have a nice town and there's a lot of historical things. So each year a theme is chosen. This year's theme is Made in Phillipsburg, PA. It allows people in the community to see what new businesses have moved into the area and what is made locally. It's just a hometown feel and um, you have to experience it to really get the flavor of how it works. The town may be small, but they still manage to put on a big show. If you like food, we have a huge selection of vendors. Things like cheese steaks, hot dogs, kettle popcorn, cotton candy, and table after table of handmade items like candles, jewelry, clothing, and everything in between. The celebration ends with a parade on Saturday, including over 16 bands from places like Virginia and Maryland. Sunday holds a car show and a hero race. This year, the money raised during the race will go towards a fund to support first responders and military who suffer from PTSD. And as it was put, Heritage Days is a homecoming. People who have moved out of town return back to the area to enjoy the celebration of Phillipsburg. We were told that there are even some weddings held during Heritage Days. I love that. Yeah, I love seeing the, the community getting together and uh, promoting our town. Which is exactly why Heritage Days was created. To keep that community pride strong, and that's what the people of Phillipsburg are doing. By remembering their past, but always looking forward. Can't live in the past, but let's not forget our past. And what better way to do that than with great food, good music, and celebrating the heritage of Phillipsburg. Despite the rain and the hot and the humid weather we've had the past couple days, there were still plenty of people out showing support for their town. When we come back, we head indoors and into Mel's kitchen. Welcome back to the center of it all. This week, Mel is grilling up a burger that isn't made with beef. On the bayou? Well, I wasn't, and despite all those pretty posies and exotic birds, it's those snakes and alligators that keep me from wanting to visit there. That said, plenty of Creoles and Cajuns call this mysterious outreach of Louisiana home, and they cook some of the most fantastic one-pot, one-skillet meals. Join me for a few minutes this morning while I show you how to make my Bayou pork burgers with raging Cajun remoulade. And it's a lot like our cocktail sauce in that it's served chilled and it's used to accompany or dress cold meats, poultry, or fish dishes. Now the Cajun Creole people, which are French in heritage, they've jazzed theirs up just a bit and they old add Creole mustard, horseradish, smoked paprika, and cayenne for heat. And in this container, I've got a cup and a half of chili powder, a half a cup of Louisiana Creole mustard, a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons of horseradish, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, a full tablespoon of smoked paprika, and a full teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And I'm going to put all of this in the work bowl. 
of my food, press food processor and you can smell this smoked paprika. I'm going to turn this on for about 10, 15 seconds. Adding a half a cup of vegetable oil slowly through the feed tube. This is just going to make it emulsify and thicken up. This looks perfect. Perfect. It's glistening and it's thick. I've transferred my remoulade sauce to the bowl and I'm going to add almost a cup of fresh parsley. Just picked that out of my garden this morning. Almost a cup of diced celery. About a half a cup of green onions and about a half a cup of white onion. Give this a really good mix. Now I've got a half a cup of mayonnaise and I'm going to add about a cup of my remoulade. This is classic Creole remoulade. We're making it Cajun by adding some mayonnaise to it. And I'm just gonna stir this together. This is going to be the topping for our pork burgers. Looks wonderful, smells wonderful, nice and creamy, great texture. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do with this a little bit later. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and it's time to put our pork burgers together. These Bayou pork burgers are a lot of fun to make. And a pork loin left untrimmed when ground has just enough fat on it to grill up a thick, juicy burger that will rival any beef burger that you've ever eaten. I've got a pound and a half of tenderloin. I've left all of the fat on the outside of it and I've cubed it. One half inch, three quarter inch cubes, no rules there. I'm going to put all these in the work bowl of my food processor. And a food processor is a wonderful way to grind all of your meats. I grind a lot of beef in my food processor as well. Put the lid on. <laughs> Put the lid on. We're going to use some rapid on off pulses. I use about 25 or 30. That meat is coarsely ground and perfect. It's beautiful. We're just going to put this in a bowl. And there's no reason to wash your work bowl here. It's still, it's still very food safe. I'm adding peppers and onions. I've got a half a cup of white onion and a half a cup of yellow and red bell pepper. Now you can use green and red bell pepper if that's what you really want to do, but I really like the subtle taste of these sweet peppers better with pork than I do the green and red. Let's add these to the work bowl. And again, with the pulses, about the same, 15, 20 this time. Vegetables, perfectly minced in a short period of time. Just add these. Neat. wouldn't be Cajun, raging Cajun, without a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, a generous tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, and a half teaspoon of Tabasco. Everybody loves Tabasco. Okay, I think I'm going to put three quarters in. Now girls, don't wear your jewelry when you're making these. There's only one way to mix this meat and that's 
put your hands in it. Looks pretty, smells delicious. Want to get it really thoroughly mixed. This takes just a, a minute or two. Now, it's going to feel a little bit looser than a typical hamburger mixture, but do not fret and do not be tempted to add an egg or breadcrumbs or any kind of binder because there's one thing about pork. When we turn this into four even-sized patties, it is going to cook up on the grill just like a burger will. I've got four beautiful pork burgers here. I'm going to turn my stove on to medium-high heat. I'm using a grill pan. You can use a cast iron skillet. You can put these out on your gas grill. Do them any way you want to do them. I'm going to place all of these to the pan. If you have a grill pan that fits over double burners, you can make eight of these at once. I'm going to let these cook for exactly six minutes per side, turning them only once. Exactly six minutes, they'll be perfect when they're done. Twelve minutes is up. Pork burgers are cooked. Get them off of our grill pan or our grill. Let's head over to the counter and put these babies on some buns. So what did I do with the rest of that remoulade sauce that I made? Well, I stirred in some mayonnaise and then I chopped up some holy trinity. Celery, onion, bell pepper. I tossed it all together with some cooked pasta and I made some holy trinity remoulade and Creole macaroni salad to go with our Ragin' Cajun pork burgers. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. When we come back, we head to downtown State College to check out a new game that is gaining popularity all over the country. It's only been out since Thursday, but Pokemon Go has already become a worldwide phenomenon, bigger than Tinder and about to take over Twitter in daily Android users. I'm no Pokemon master, so I'm out and about to find out who's catching them all. Wandering after, you know, fictional characters on your, your screen, but everybody's doing it. So like, everyone's just like, hey, you know, how you doing? What, what team are you on? And it spans so many generations with when Pokemon first came out as a cartoon show and when it first came out on like a Game Boy and it's just continued on. Everywhere you turn from the Lion Shrine to your office to the old main lawn, Pokemon Go has adults and kids alike addicted to their phones. As soon as you raise your phone up, Pokemon Go, uh, I think the fifth this Penn State community can definitely benefit from it. I, I think the biggest like reason that this is so successful is that a lot of people are like finally getting that like kick to you know get off up off, off their butts. Exactly. This isn't your grandma's Atari. Heck, no one batted an eye as you played words with friends or became a candy crushing crusader on your mobile. For once we could say it's good that we're addicted to our phone. It's not those type of video games where you can sit in at your TV and play at home for hours and hours a day. You actually have to go out, walk back and forth between the library and then all the way to East Hall to go catch a Pokemon, reload on Pokeballs, and it's like a whole bunch of jumps and stuff that you can go to. Out and about looking to make a catch or battling at one of those gyms is where you meet the people. And I found someone who has turned this into a professional resource doing just that. One of the really good things about this game is that the community that you get introduced now is really uh, diverse. So uh, me, I'm an engineering major here at Penn State, but then I've gotten to meet uh, doctors, people who are sociology majors, people who are just up here to be up here, people who have traveled the world. Everyone plays this game now. Yes, there are always concerns in the digital age, but your biggest question should be, what team are you? I was originally going to do Mystic, but um, I don't know, they, uh, they're just kind of eh. And then Team Instinct sounds like a brand of axe, like, so I'm like, alright, Valor, that sounds good. 
I still don't know if I could see myself trying to catch them all. And Andrew, don't be a lame. Get this Pokemon game. Listen, Andrew, the world is counting on you to get this game, so please, do your best. Do your best to make us proud of you, man. I was never a big Pokemon fan, but the game sure does look like a lot of fun. I guess I could break down and download it. What the heck? Andrew Callista, the next Pokemon Master, right here on the center of it all. Once people start playing, they start to get addicted. While some people were out looking for Pokemon, we went to Center County Paws to visit some kittens who are looking for their new home. Thank you, Alicia. Over here at Center County Paws, time for our pet of the show. Once again, joined by Chris Faust. Chris, we got two really great girls here with us today. They're so rambunctious, they don't want to stay on camera. We could let them go off camera, but this right here, this is one of the main draws this week. This is Brooklyn. She is an adorable 10-week-old little girl. She is at Paws with her sister, Aziza. Brooklyn is the calmer kitten of the two. She's gonna let me hold her for just a little bit more and then she's going to want to get on the floor and play. But both Brooklyn and Aziza were found abandoned when they were just very tiny. And thanks to the Paul's Nursing and Orphan Kitten Program, they came to us, our foster families bottle fed them, they both are 10 weeks old and they are ready to find their forever homes. Well, we could let Brooklyn get down. She seems to want to get down and play. And of course, I said we had two girls here. One of them is Azio, Az Aziza, and she's having tons of fun with her balls down on the floor. Aziza is very energetic. She is all kitten, all play, lots of energy, but she does enjoy snuggling and cuddling when she finally calms down. And I highly recommend if anyone brings home a kitten, it's much easier to bring home two than one because they'll entertain themselves. <laughs> well, I, I can't help. I'm not looking at the camera. I, I, I can't really look at you. I'm looking at all the fun they're having and I'm kind of jealous right now. I wish I was having that much fun, you know, just hanging out, you know, but some of us have to have well, to work, Chris, yes, right? Yes, we, we do. We, we have, have to, to work. That. Kittens grow up to be cats and there we are. But before they're cats, they're kittens. And yes. right now, Center County Paws, if you're in the market for a kitten or you want to give a kitten as a gift, now is a great time to visit yes. Center County Paws. We have a great promotion, the Kitten Days of July going on at Center County Paws. Thanks to a generous donor, all kitten adoption fees have been waived for this month. Normally, it's $80 to adopt a kitten, but for the month of July, I would recommend you come to Paws because you won't have to pay an adoption fee. And after their adoption, the uh, Forever family receives a complimentary exam that they can use at their own vet's office. Well, that is why we do the pet of the show to get the great word out like that. It's a tremendous deal. Stop on over at Center County Paws. And also, if you're not in the market to adopt a dog, a cat, a kitten, or a puppy. They could also use donations anytime. Stop by and help out the local pets in Center County. For more information, visit centercountypaws.org. That's everything for this week's Center of It All. I'll see you guys next time.